So previous lecture, I kind of went from uh, some of the obs early observations of Mars to just sort of the fun speculation about Martians and the War of the Worlds. Uh, but the thing is that Mars has always caught our attention, uh, named after the god of war, uh, big bright thing out there that's pretty obvious in the sky that is reddish, it's different from the stars, and uh, so it has caught attention for a long time. And uh, the whole concept that, you know, the, the basic parameters, rotation, tilt, seasons, that sounds very much like Earth and uh, much more so than anything else that's out there. And so it really catches people's attention. So what is Mars really like? Well, again, on the left there, we have some of these early albedo maps, albedo being the bright and dark region, of, of some of the features on Mars. On the right is a photograph here uh, from Mars, about Mars. And you can see on the photograph ice caps. So you see ice caps here. Uh, you see this large dark region right there called Sirtis Major. Uh, there's some other lighter color regions and dark regions here. And so so th this, this is our basic you know, sort of view of Mars. It has bright and dark splotches on it. So this is an albedo map showing the bright and dark regions on Mars. Uh, south is the north, north is at the, uh, uh, the south is the top of that, that map, north is the bottom of the map, because telescopes tend to flip things upside down. All right, so so th this, this is kind of the map you would use if you were looking through a small telescope and trying to identify what you saw on Mars. Well, on the right is actually an uh, amateur's telescope view of Mars taken on different days and sandwiching them together to give you uh, the idea of Mars and rotation. Of course, that's how you figure out the rotation rate of Mars is by watching that go around like that. Uh, well, since then, we've learned a lot more about Mars. On the left is the Hubble telescope view. Okay, uh, The average albedo is about 0.15. to so reflects about 15% of the light that hits it. That's much less than Earth has. That's because there's no water, there's no oceans, there's very few clouds. The average density is much lower than Earth's average density. So that means that Mars does not have nearly as big of a core as Earth does. The average temperature ranges from a low of minus 140 degrees Celsius. That's more than cold enough to freeze carbon dioxide, which is actually the main composition of the atmosphere, up to 20 degrees Celsius, which is like a very cool day on Earth. Uh, uh, the average temperature is about minus 23 degrees Celsius. So that is darn cold. Okay, that's like northern Canada cold. Rotation rate just over 24 hours, tilt about 25 degrees, diameter much smaller than Earth. Again, you could fit almost eight Marses inside of Earth. Mars in orbit, much more elliptical than Earth's orbit, so 0 0.09 eccentricity. So it ranges from as close as 1.38 AU to about 1.67 AU. It averages about one and a half AU from the sun. The tilt is almost uh, uh, two degrees relative to the ecliptic, so it's very close to Earth's orbit, and it's about 1.88 years. So that's just converting those days I gave you earlier into years. It does have seasons, okay, because it's tilted, then you're gonna have seasons. And so you have ice caps, and in the winter time, the ice caps get bigger, and in the summertime, the ice caps get smaller. These are our images right here, pieced together from satellites orbiting Mars. Now, the seasons give rise to the, uh, uh, or the tilt gives rise to the seasons, uh, same on Mars as Earth, but remember, Mars's orbit is vastly more elliptical. So what that means is that that it is so much more elliptical that the distance of the sun also affects the seasons. So, for example, uh, at summertime on Mars, you're very far from the sun, and so it doesn't get all that warm in the northern hemisphere. Okay, uh, whereas in the winter, uh, 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 in the winter 
uh, you're really close to Mars in the southern hemisphere. So in the northern hemisphere, it's winter. Okay, so so uh, uh, that means you're very close, so it doesn't get all that cold. But in the southern hemisphere, it's winter time. And, uh, when you're far from the sun, that makes it extra cold. And it's summertime when you're close to the sun, and so that makes it, in fact, not quite as cold. So, okay, so, so not quite as warm. Okay, so ra rather uh, uh, extra warm. So that means that in the southern hemisphere, the winters are super cold and the summers are extra warm, whereas the, the, the uh, uh, winters are milder in the northern hemisphere and the summers are milder in the northern hemisphere. So this is one planet in which the seasons are determined mostly by the tilt but they're also mitigated and affected by the orbital distance. In studying Mars, we want to send spacecraft to Mars. And so uh, one of the first spacecraft to go to Mars was uh, the Mariner 4 spacecraft, which just flew by distantly. Okay, it was a very distant mission. Uh, Mariner uh, 6 flew by cl much closer, and Mariner 9 went to orbit. The Soviets sent a couple, Mars 1 and Mars 2. They didn't work right. Okay, and Then Mars 3 landed and then shut itself off once it landed. And, and then uh, uh, a few years later, the Americans landed with the Viking 1 and Viking 2 spacecraft, and they worked perfectly. Uh, Vikings also had orbiters that orbited around Mars. So this the the uh, while while the other missions went into orbit around Mars, the Vikings actually landed and gave us our very first up close views of the surface of the planet. And and so they landed, uh, operated for a while, uh, giving us uh, up close views, measuring the atmosphere, measuring the surface conditions. Uh, so up to that point, we didn't really know for sure. And so um, the, this was the very first landing on another world other than, for example, the moon. Now, the Soviets actually tried a lot of, of uh, Mars missions. Uh, uh, the Soviets had uh, an interesting sort of thing here. Uh, the first thing they sent to Mars, Mars 1 blew up in the launch pad. And then Mars 1 launched, went towards uh, uh, there, and then lost. And they, they lost contact on the way. They had some others that they lost contact with on the way. Uh, Mars 2 crashed. Mars 3 landed and then shut itself off. And Mars 4 actually missed Mars. And Mars 5 arrived at Mars, and then they lost contact with it. And then they had a couple of them called Phobos 1 and Phobos 2. Uh, one of them quit working on the way. Phobos 2 quit working after, uh, uh, right after it got there. Mars 96 blew up on the launch pad, uh, or actually crashed. And then uh, uh, they had another one uh, called Phobos Grunt, which launched into orbit around the Earth and just stayed there. And they had many, many others. The uh, Russians have, amazingly enough, a near perfect record of with Mars. All failures. Okay. They did spectacular with Venus. Venus, Venus, they did great with. Uh, Mars, not so much with. Uh, so Mars, they had all kind of issues with. And now they're not the only ones. There are a lot of other missions to Mars too. Uh, uh, one of the most recent ones, like here, for example, with the Phobos Grunt, and it, it failed to leave Earth orbit. Okay. Uh, plenty of other failures, including some American failures uh, here. Uh, 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 several of these were quite, quite spectacular failures. United Kingdom, Japan, a variety of others. You know, Mars Global Surveyor, an American spacecraft, actually went to Mars and worked perfectly for several years until they had... Uh, a, a, a computer glitch that actually told it to go point away from the sun and lost contact with it. Over half of all missions to Mars from all nations have failed. Mars is a very difficult world. It just seems to eat spacecraft. And so Mars, Mars is a very difficult world. To Currently active, uh, there's actually several spacecraft. Uh, Mars has been of interest for a very long time. And every two years, there's a launch window. And so most of the time, when there's a launch window, somebody sends a spacecraft to Mars, at least definitely for the last 20 years or so. 
And so uh, Mars Odyssey is currently active, has been orbiting Mars for almost 20 years. Uh, Mars Express, European Space Agency, Mars Exploration Rover. Uh, uh, well, I, I, okay, that's list is currently active. It recently quit working, so that should probably be taken off the list now. Uh, but that was a rover there. Uh, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, the Mars Science Curiosity Rover that's currently working, the MAVEN spacecraft, Mars Orbiter Mission. Uh, that's actually an Indian spacecraft that's been orbiting Mars, studying it. ExoMars is a European spacecraft which has a ride-along Russian uh, 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 probe with it. Um, that one's working. And um, InSight, uh, the most recent American one uh, um, from 2018, uh, actually landed on Mars. Currently, there's actually a uh, spacecraft on the way to Mars. Uh, United Arab Emirates has launched a spacecraft to Mars, and uh, so has uh, China. China has launched a, a pair to Mars. One's going to orbit, one's going to land. Uh, United States has another rover that's going to land on Mars, and carrying with it is the very first helicopter. So this is like a drone type thing, not, not a huge helicopter. It's, it's like a drone that's going to be able to fly around at the surface there and study Mars. So those are the, on, the, on the way right now, and they should be arriving here in the not too distant future. There are a number of planned missions too. Uh, the United States is planning to send things in uh, the next two launch windows. The next launch window is going to be the summer of 2022. And so, uh, and it takes about nine months to get there. And so uh, 2022, and then uh, about every two years, so 2024, you're, likewise, European Space Agency is planning on something. Uh, Japan is planning on sending something. Russia is planning on sending one of their own, uh, not right along, but their own separate one. Uh, if it works, it'll be the very first Russian one that actually worked. India is planning on sending something in 2024. Okay, now, I should also point out SpaceX is, has said that they want to send something in 2022. Now, I will also point out SpaceX said they were going to send something in 2018, and they did not. They said they were going to send something in 2016, and they did not. Uh, so they have a track record of saying they're going to send something to Mars and not yet sending it. So uh, they're still working on it, but uh, they do say they want to send something in 2022.